said, hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> Dear listeners, we would like to apologize for last week. Yes. M- Mame had a lot to do. I didn't, Girl. but you know, I still. <laughs> yeah, remember, even though I had a lot to do, I was ready. You were, <laughs> just, you were, you were, you were. It was going to be hard, girl. It was going to be hard. It, until on Sunday when I said, hey, can we catch you? Like, yes, Jesus, thank you, amen. <laughs> well, especially because when you wrote me that, I was like walking back from the pride, pride thing, the gay ocho. I was sweating like a pig, and I was already a little bit cranky i was like sure girl yes ma'am yes please by all means girl Mm -hmm. so so are you glad that there's no more spice in the world (laughs) you know i am but at the same okay so i am Mm -hmm. obviously Uh but it is i i go back to what i said when we first started talking about them before i felt so much like rupaul set them up Mm -hmm. and they were not ready in any way, shape, or form Mm-mm. for this competition. And her lip syncing, it was just, I mean, it was like almost like, it wasn't even funny. It was like kind of depressing. Cause I was like, gosh, she really is like so I mean, green. I mean, I will say with as much as I like as titties, that was a bad, a bad lip sync for her too, right? Like, I mean, it wasn't great, I but at least really, it was like. really like as titties. She is really no, grown on me. And I thought, I thought her looks, although that last look, it just seemed to be cinched like this much, this, this much. It's like she has this thing. I mean, I'm assuming that at some point on the show, we're going to hear about her body image issues because clearly from her outfitting, she has some body image issues because she just will not tighten things more. Yeah. Like, yeah. so clearly there's something going on yeah, there. But but she, but, pads, she pads the hell out of her ass and she'll make that tight. Well, because that makes the other part look smaller. But she just, the, the tit, it's never I fitted know. right right here. Because the thing is, is that, okay, so controversial yet personal statement, right? These girls get these outfits made, uh-huh. and the people that make these outfits, whether it be themselves or anybody else, they make them with cups in mind. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these girls now for whatever reason Mm -hmm. just do not like having tits anymore Mm -hmm. and every time you hear michelle make a comment it's like think about jacks think Mm -hmm. about they're like it doesn't fit right yeah it's Mm -hmm. not fitting right because the person designed it with cups in mind and then they don't have tits Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i don't Mm -hmm. i don't understand Mm -hmm. and i think it for me like i get it the really really thin super violet chotsky girls like Sure, they can do it because those dresses are like a size zero. Like, yep. they don't need tits. But if you are anything beyond that, you have to do that to get the silhouette right. Like, it's true. Oh, it makes me it makes me crazy because I'll see the most beautiful dresses on that show, and I'm like, yeah, they don't look fabulous. All right, that's enough ranting for that. I'm very upset. I mean, or, 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 or the other side of that is have them designed to be a real thin model, right? Have them designed with, I mean, Charlize Theron's out there, you know, looking beautiful. You're Uh, right. Heidi Klub's out there looking beautiful. Like, you don't have to have titties to. No, you don't have to have titties. And that's the thing. It's like, but that's what I mean. It's these people that they go to for these designs. Mm-hmm. Right. And I know this is from the drag queens here. There are drag queen designers and dear listeners that don't know that much about drag culture. There are people here that are that's their specialty. However, and they make lots of money and they make lots of money. However, lots a lot of, of them use the same patterns mm-hmm. that they use for both the girls with boobs and the girls without boobs. Mm-hmm. And you actually have to like change the design mm-hmm. if you're not going to have boobs. Yeah. Like you yeah. can't, you can't just be like, "Oh, you're a size 12. Okay, great. It makes size 12 first. So, no, it's not the mm-hmm. same." And so that's why they look baggy and, mm-hmm. and just like unfinished. All right. <laughs> are, are you done, girl? Are you done? Are you are, are you glad you got that off your chest? <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> I hate you right now. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you>. ah! <laughs> yes no i am i am actually glad about I'm that i'm glad i'm glad girl 
speaking of getting things off our, off your chest, did you know that we have a Patreon? Dear that was a terrible transition. Listeners. That was terrible. Well, you didn't leave me with much. If you go to patreon.com. <laughs> like those cups. Bibs and Mame. You can throw us some money. Hey, Mame. Yes. Did you know that we have another podcast? What? Dear it's listeners, fun. it's called You Slay Me. It's a Murder, She Wrote podcast. Are you rubbing hey, your nipples? I uh, know. Scratch my under boob. <laughs> <laughs> I was that's like, are you that excited? That's, you more, that excited? that's more of this. That's more of this. I mean. Oh, man. God. I don't know where your nipples are. I don't know how big they are. They, they ain't down old. here. That, I guess well, some I people's know. are. I guess some people's are. Some like people's that. some people's nibbles are like that. Yeah, but my, mine mine are mine are mine are right here. There's they, they point straight out that you can you can see them through most clothes because they're always a little. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hey, hey, you gonna be real? You gonna be real popular down here? Yes. <laughs> I hope not because I have one rule: you can touch a lot of my body, you cannot touch that part of my body. <laughs> oh my god Alexa better... play Mariah Carey's touch my body <laughs> touch my body baby <laughs> at the face <laughs> you weren't expecting that were you <laughs> I was hoping for it I was hoping for hey, it hey babe did yes. you know that we have merchandise <laughs> what? <laughs> if you go to mibsandbabe.com, you can buy a nice shirt. We have new shirts out. We have shirts that say, that's a racism. Oh, my gosh. And we, we do, have shirts actually. that say, beards are just contouring for men. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, need to, we need to start telling our friends about these shirts and not well, just on the podcast. our friends should be listening to this podcast. <laughs> I know, but once again, we should be telling our friends about those shirts and not just on the box. Anyway, hey, Mame. <laughs> yes. Do you know what I like? Um. Oh. Oh. Wait. Hold on. I know this. Um. Uh. Dramatic. Dramatic monologues from the seventies. Oh no, not that. Um. Oh um, wait, I remember. Um, what? Uh. Five star reviews. Five star reviews. Hey, Mame. We just got a new review that I did not notice. We so, actually got two two things, and I was going to bring this up when we talked about the reviews, because I actually got an audio message. You got an uh, audio message? I got an audio person sent me an audio, well, they sent me an audio message. They didn't send it to Mims and Meme. Um, it was like a two-minute glorification. They love us. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It's really nice. So, so, so you two years first, and I'll shout out our the next one. So, so this is from um, I don't know how to pronounce that, so I do apologize, dear listener, that I, I, Foyashi. There we go. Um, did you notice in the heart attack episode thirty one of our podcast? Podcast. It's the one where you know Hal Holbrook has the heart attack, and everybody's coming around and. <laughs> Julia yes, called girl. Peyton by his first lay, name and his last name, which means that Julia kept her uh, sugar baker. She kept her maiden name. Of course she did. Of course she did, because she is an Atlanta sugar baker, a I'm strong about to say, woman. Like, they ain't no, she ain't going to never change that ever. No, she ain't. No, she ain't. Okay, go on, go on, go on. T t tell us what else we got. So I'm gonna do this um this little um <clears throat> this little shout out message from let me find it all here real quick. Oh quick. mercy, she she had all this time to set the, set the shit up, and she just did decide not to. Girl, I got too many. I got too many different things on here. I got to. So this is from um this is from an Instagram follower, uh the real psychic Leo Brown, honey, the real psychic Leo Brown. Uh, Leo left us a very beautiful long message about how he used to watch this show, how it has meant a lot to him to reconnect to this show through us, that he appreciates how we keep it real, pointing out stuff that needs to be pointed out, even though we still are enjoying this show. So this shout out goes to the real psychic, Leo Brown, honey. Yes. yes. Leo also said if we, if we ever wanted to have him on the show, he would not say no. I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Oh, Lord, let me not drop. That, that about made me drop the mic. Let me not let me drop talk my to mic. my partner about this let first. Me let me talk to my little partner in crime about this, Andy. We're having, having a conflab. 
I cut that girl down a cough lab. <laughs> this is season four, so episode <laughs> 10, <laughs> Manhunt. I'm Julia Sugarbakers. I'm Julia Sugarbakers. I'm Julia Sugarbakers. I'm Julia Sugarbakers. And that's Marjorie. Just so you will know, and your children will someday know, is the night. The light went out in Georgia. The light went out. The light went out. The light went out. The light went out. And that is the night. The light went out in Georgia. Well, now you do. <laughs> Girl, we'll have that cop flag whenever I come down to, this week, okay? By the way, dear listeners, this week, your two favorite friends are going to be back in person together. That's right. That's right. She's dragging my ass to Miami. I didn't drag your ass to Miami. No, Rita All Rudner I said did. Rita Rudner, and you were like, I'm coming. I'm like, okay. I girl. mean, I've been trying to see her for birth. I mean, it came out of the way. You know what I, She's funny. I found out something uh, the other week that I was so sad because I was like, oh, man, that would have also been perfect for us. What? But uh, I found out literally the day after, apparently Charo was here. See, Charo I mixed with because if she's just doing, she's been doing a lot of the orchestral stuff and not the funny yeah. stuff. If it, oh, if, if I don't it, know what kind of show it was. Yeah, it was like, like I, I, I respect and admire and love the fact that she that she does the orchestral beautiful stuff but my gay gay soul wants to see the silliness <laughs> you're like enough with the classical i want to see the coochie 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 exactly i want to see her the short ass dress is going he's we would be in the coochie. audience literally screaming it where's the coochie coochie coochie, 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 coochie. coochie. as she's where's going the through coochie, this coochie, like coochie, coochie. this amazing 12 minute Spanish guitar sonata, whatever. There's a coochie. It's, like it's like the gay version of Freebird. We're just screaming out coochie, coochie, coochie. <laughs> oh, all these like old Latin people and Jewish people would look at us so <clears throat> disgustingly, like, who let them in here? <laughs> so we're at Sugar Bakers. Sugar Bakers. Suzanne's here. Hey girl, hey. She's she's looking for Mary Jo. Mary Jo's not around. She's out back with Anthony. She dinged okay. Mary Jo's car. Oh, okay. That's that doesn't sound like a good she thing. She left she left a note on the car. She left a note that she always leaves. Hey, I just dinged your car. People are probably looking around thinking I'm writing my insurance uh information, name and insurance information on this. I'm not. Have a nice day. Get guess who? And left off the car. I love, um, is that a thing, by the way? I've always heard that used on TV shows. Is that a thing that people did was like write their name and insurance yes. and just put it on the car? Yes. Interesting. I did not yes. know that. Yes, yes. I always thought that was just a kind of a joke for television. No, like I've, I, I, I have known somebody to bump into a car, get out, make sure there's no damage and move. I don't, I don't think I've ever done that. I, I do, dear listeners, that is illegal. So please don't do that. You should technically call the cops to have them inspect and stuff, get a report, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah. Well, Lord. Anthony and Mary Jo are here. <laughs> and and Mary Jo already knows about the thing, by the way. She we we haven't gotten that point yet, girl. <laughs> don't skip ahead about two, three minutes. We got, two, two minutes. We, we got to make it through this rug that the Farcasey brothers won't accept back. And Anthony to? goes through a racism. <laughs> Do we have to? Like, I, I noticed that. I, I mean, I, I feel like later as this show goes on, like, we get more Anthony doing accents. Like, uh -huh. it seems like it becomes a, a thing, like a regular thing. Well, girl, I don't know if you've seen the next episode yet. No, I haven't watched but it, it yet. It's, it's, it's the first Suzanne's fat episode. Yeah. The one where we have to stop pretending that she's not fat. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, great. It's, it's 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 the first. It's the first. It's great. The, it's the first one. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's 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 a it's a 
correct. My husband saw that and saw, ooh, goodness, that happened. Um, <laughs> so Julia looks at Suzanne and says, don't you have something to say? And Mary Jo's like, oh, I know about the ding. And Julia's like, I remember when you dinged a family of five, Suzanne, and father had to go on disability. <laughs> <laughs> Which I was kind of, I mean, <laughs> I, I kept for, you know, I guess obviously when I was younger, I didn't get that joke. But when she said it this time, I was like, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Uh, 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 but the audience is like <laughs> or laugh track uh-huh. like yeah do you think this was in front of a live studio audience no mm, i don't ever remember them saying it back then you know they used to say it at the beginning of shows this was filmed in front of a live studio audience yeah i don't yeah. ever remember design women saying that so it might i mean it might or have had been, the but little live thing it. come up at the beginning yeah that's right because like, cheers was so. filmed in front of a live studio audience wasn't it yeah, I think so. So, um, at least at the beginning, it might have been, but it, you got also once again, I remember me and you are so old at this point, like it might have been beyond the point where they even started, they stopped doing <laughs> that. So, <laughs> before uh, they stopped telling everybody that, they're like, God, we're old. Yeah, we are, aren't we? We are, we are, girl. We, are we, we in we, our 40s now? We're in our 40s. Do you do know what this year is, by the way? What I didn't realize until yesterday. What is it? This year is our 25th high school reunion. Are you going? Oh, no. No, 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 no. I mean, unless the same day as Statesville Pride, then we both, <laughs> both go to that. Oh, that's true. Now, I don't think it is the same day, but, you know, that's true. <laughs> Get a twofer. <laughs> Get it out of the way, girl. <laughs> I'm going to show up at the parade, and I'm going to show up on the field, girl. And just, just did drag it both. <laughs> hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. I know it yet. Hey y'all! I know it, none of y'all surprised at all, so let's not even pretend like you is. Let's not pretend. Girl, sweat everywhere because it's gonna be in the middle of summer. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many of y'all got grandchildren now? How many of y'all want to see us do drag in front of them? <laughs> <laughs> I brought a book to read. <laughs> it's the That's Bible. The- <laughs> let's see how much murder and incest there is in this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Age one. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't take long for 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 there get ready to be a, like an infant side. It doesn't. No, no. Infanticide. There's not much lead up. Honestly, no, there's no, not no, much no. lead up. <laughs> there's not a lot of build up before the bad stuff starts happening. No. Just Adam, Eve. Then there's Cain. Well, Cain's dead, and then there. <laughs> And then there's magically hey, hey, more children hey, somehow. Hey, yeah. The boys get married to who? The people. The people over there. The, people over there. <laughs> the Elvenkin. You did not. This is actually. All right. We need We need to get this back we, together. No, it is. <laughs> we, before we start discussing the subplot of god's human conveyor belt right. that we didn't know about that he's making so, so mary joe charlene comes in real quick mary joe invites charlene to go to, on a walk with her no 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 i've already got my i've already got my maternity exercise plan i'm going to stick to that because a walk is going to like whatever it's gonna be too much too much for her and you know what she came in to make sure she still had her union fees because she's real pregnant and walk the fuck right back out that door <laughs> she was in this episode for literally a minute oh uh, like, god a literal she came in and i i was caught off guard when she left to get i was like wait a minute you but, just sat she could have just sat down and they could have forgot she was even there but suzanne was like you know, I really miss when pregnant women just could sit around and do nothing. And then Jane Fonda, she's getting on them too. And I like Jane Fonda better when she was a communist. And Julie's like, she was never a communist. Well, she dressed like one. <laughs> oh, those ladies. It's like they know us. <laughs> uh huh. We find out Every- Charlene's house hunting and Charlene leaves. There you go. <laughs> That's it. Not that to was be it. seen. That was Not to be seen <laughs> again. Like, bye, Charlene. Bye. Bye, y'all. Not, and she's not in the next episode either. I'm, dear listeners, I'm going and warning you. I, she's just not in the next episode. I don't think she's the, the rest of the season because of the babity. 
That little baby. Got that little baby girl. Mm-hmm. Does, she, does, she, she got, does, does, does she end up divorced at some point in this? No, I don't think they ever – they never – I don't think they ever actually end up breaking up. Okay. I, I don't think. But we'll, we'll I feel get... like they do have they do have some sort of issues at some point, but I don't think they've ever broken up. Well, we'll get to that eventually. Mary Jo's very sad. She's single. Why is she sad? She's single. Oh, and no. there was that survey that was on the front of people in Newsweek that said that women over 30 are just gonna become old maids. 95% of them are gonna become old maids and just if they're single and they're never gonna find love, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Dear listeners. I would like, to, even though this comes up at the later on this episode, I would like to tell you, and please keep this with you if anybody ever mentions this, because it's still in our zeitgeist, right? This is st- it's still there. This still comes up. This study was completely debunked. Like it was, it's like the one, and this one, this is going to be controversial. Brave thing I'm going to say. It's like the one for children getting autism with vaccines. Girl completely debunked i had if you go and actually look at that that study for the autism vaccines it was written by a sociologist at unc who later later came out and said that their data was not good it has been quoted so many times and it is it it's just it's just not factual this one was just not factual it it just it does not hold up to any kind of rigor any kind of like data integrity, nothing. It is mm. nothing. And of course it makes it everywhere so fast as possible to spread or stop the spread. My, um, <clears throat> my husband probably could overhear this conversation and was just screaming. <laughs> 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 I, I had, I had a, um, I had a woman who I worked with who was her, her daughter was, 15, 14, getting ready to get the HPV vaccine. Mm -hmm. Um, And she, she told her daughter not to. And I was like, well, I completely disagree with you. I was this person's supervisor. She's like, well, why is that? It causes autism. I was like, well, first of all, no, you need to go back and look at that study. It does not cause autism. And that was specifically the measles. Also, you, by not giving your daughter this vaccine, you may give her cervical cancer, which is far more likely to kill her than anything a vaccine could ever do. So I think that that is bad parenting. And she looked at me and blinked, and I was like, yeah, go look it up. You say you're all into studies and stuff. Go look it up. I'll give you 15 minutes to come back and apologize, and then you better call your daughter and tell her to go get it. She did. (laughs) You could have saved somebody's life just then. (sighs) You might be saving somebody's life right now as we Yeah, like, oh, God. Mm. Mm. (laughs) Mm. Mm. Oh, Mims. <laughs> I have my moments. <laughs> they, are, they are few and far between. Also, this little fever I got affected my crazy. You give me uh-huh. fever. Mm. Boom, 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 boom. I just Where remember that one scene oh, in God. was Unhappily Ever After. One of those horrible. UPN Fox white people comedies and it, it the the grandmother comes in and just starts you give me fever and walks off stage into the kitchen <laughs> I don't it that must, sounds like an unhappily ever after kind of it moment does. it I, really does I must have been like 10 or 11 when I saw them but it is stuck with me to the de- this day that sounds like an unhappy uh-huh. ever after moment. Definitely, actually. So Mary Jo's going to take the weekend off to herself and find herself a man. Oh, goodness. Okay, Mary Jo. All right, girl. So now we're at media play. <laughs> Dear listeners, in Hickory, North Carolina, oh. there used to be the best store. It was the best store. It was called Media Play. It had books. It had DVDs, it had t- tapes and CDs, and it had anime, and it just had shit every... It was so good. It was like Barnes & Noble on steroids. It was so fantastic. Was it not? That was our favorite store. Oh, my God. I used to go there. I remember the time that I had a, 
I was right up at my credit limit. I used a credit card there. They were like, this has been declined, sir. And I just laughed through the card behind me and grabbed another one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, decisions we make when we're that age. <sighs> I was just thinking about that too <laughs> earlier today. I was like, Lord, where I have come from in my uh, life. <laughs> it's like gospel song just waiting to happen, girl. <laughs> where I have made come it through. From. <laughs> Y'all don't know Y'all don't where know. I've been. Got the lights turned off. Yeah. Had to commit some sins. <laughs> I mean. <Sorry. laughs> uh, so Mar Mary Jo is looking for this book called Power Dating. Oh. oh. <laughs> but but bottoms. Julia is looking for real literature. Okay, can we pause for a moment? <laughs> Hold on, let me let me get through of this all line. The things to look for, <laughs> she goes to the clerk and asks for a test. <laughs> Go on, like babe. who in the eighties is sitting at home and says, "I really want to, I want to read Test of the Arbor Pills." Really, I really want to. Like it's on okay. my mind. So here's the thing, Miss Sugarbaker. I'm sure is a patron of the library. Oh, yes. I'm sure she could just go up to the library and get it. Number two, I'm sure she has like a library in her house that has a very old copy of this. I just, it was of all the things. And she's like, she's talking to the poor clerk. She's like, do you have anything that hasn't been on Don Donahue? And like, I, she, and she implies that there's no literature that's been made in the 20th century. Toni Morrison would like to have a word with her. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was funny too, because uh, I thought of all of the things I would love to read, it would be with an author that was on Donahue. <laughs> yeah, no, right. I mean, you know, if I had to pick a story, funny story, how Oprah had her book club. Yes. <laughs> this is, this is like foreshadowing. Oh my gosh, you're right. I bet Donahue kicks himself now. He's just like, uh, I could have uh, done that. Is Donahue still alive? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wait. I think he is. Okay. I don't know how Jesse still is. Either he's, well, yeah, no, she, she's going to be like Cher. It's going to be her Cher and the cockroaches. That's it. <laughs> just It's just going to be her head floating there with those red ass glasses. <laughs> I always think of her. I she's one of those people that I can always imagine um, having a floating head, kind of like they did on Futurama. I can easily uh -huh. see her mm -hmm. in that same sort yep. of like just here. Yep. They just bring her back. Yep. Easily. I think she was a floating head in Futurama. To be, I think she was one of them. Was she? <laughs> I think she was. I, think I never was. actually finished Futurama. I, 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 I didn't I, either. I yeah. didn't either. It, it does have the saddest moment in animation history. Oh, yes, I know. I remember that moment, and I did cry profusely. Oh yeah, uh, when I, I saw that. I can't. I can't watch that episode ever again. Like I, yeah. I can't. I, I, I was like, I am not okay. It's I one of the saddest okay. episodes ever made in ever. Yes, I, truly, I just, it really. I just kept saying, "I am not okay. I am not okay." Mm -hmm. No, I don't <sighs> like it. Like well, it. Mary Jo and Suzanne find this little book about power dating. And yes, they find it. And Suzanne's looking through it. And she's like, everybody knows this stuff. And she looks at she looks at Mary Jo. She's like, I've offered to help you before. Why don't you just let me help you now and, get, and just not worry about the dings? And Mary Jo's like, fine, but we're doing it according to the book. Um, which, by the way, uh, if Mary Jo has as much luck looking for a man as she did looking for that book, which we discovered later, it had a giant display in the middle of the bookstore. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't have a good feeling that this is going to go very well. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! So we're at the grocery store, and Suzanne's yes, just the sexy staying, grocery store. <laughs> Suzanne's just staying there eating grapes. And Mary Jo's like doing actual grocery shopping. And Suzanne's like, you know, 
you need you need to like have a sexy cart. You instead of this twenty five pounds of cat food and the biggest box of Kotex on this planet ever ever made. Product placement. <laughs> well, that's that's a lot of product to place. Uh -huh. Like like I feel like your box of Kotex should not be larger than your torso. I, I've this that's it's like the episode of Seinfeld where uh uh oh god what's what's Julie Louis, Elaine gets all of the sponges left in uh New York after they're banned by the FDA <laughs> <laughs> I Did, mean it's 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 very it's a very weird thing I mean obviously lady parts and lady fluids those jokes just write themselves yes um however I feel like this show probably could have avoided that yeah well yes 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 Dear listeners, if you don't know, if you're younger, a, a sponge is a contraceptive that that's basically a sponge that had spermicidal liquid in it um, that women could wear, and it was apparently very comfortable, except it causes caused toxic shock syndrome if left in. So, yeah. Yeah. Poor women. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, things, the things that happened to them uh -huh. are just so Suzanne, Suzanne moves, puts the Kotex and the stuff in the other cart, puts pate, some chilled wine, just starts throwing tomatoes into Mary Jo's cart to slowly pushes the other cart out of the way. <laughs> Made me laugh. Um, but but I, mean, the, she, I guess she was right, though. There's night. something she very right. important. What? There's a man! Oh my God, not a man! <laughs> And Suzanne, it's like, well, Mary Jo, you keep being wishy-washy, but according to the book, you should just surround yourself with laughter. So she's oh. like, he's at a, he's at the zucchini. That is a little bit too much for me. She's like, do it. So Mary Jo nose. just starts laughing. <laughs> oh, that he's like, well, and she grabs the bag. There's like five of them that come off and. He's like, what's so funny? She's like, oh, these zucchini. <laughs> I have a great recipe for a ratatouille. Oh, I love ratatouille that the man's wife comes by. You think that's where the movie Ratatouille got its origins? No. Oh. <laughs> I would have liked that connection. We, we find out tonight if Michelle Yeoh was going to win an Oscar, though, pretty much. It's, oh, what's, what's tonight? The um, Sags. In, or, or, Sags. Yeah. Sags or, no, wait, or, or is Directors Guild tonight? Sat. Well, I, I, I'm no, still Directors Guild was this... last night. Directors Guild was last night. The I'm, Producers Guild. I'm still trying to figure out how the yeah. SAG Awards works. It's going to work on Netflix. That's going to be it's so on Netflix. strange. It's on Netflix. It's on Netflix. It's on Netflix's YouTube channel. Oh. So you watch it live on Netflix's YouTube channel. Oh, okay. Yeah, my husband was looking into it yesterday. I'm really glad you cl you clarified because uh -huh. didn't that used to be on like Turner, like like T T N T or something like that, like an yes. actual network? Yes, yes. Oh, Jeez. God, boy, oh boy, this is mm. where we're at now. I mean, I I will say though, you know, as much as I kind of joke about it, at the same time, YouTube's viewership is probably higher than it's TNT. True. So it's true. So yeah. Suzanne's like, hey, there's those two hot guys over there. Oh, never mind. Mary Jo's like, what? Two guys, one cart, fresh pasta. You figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. We have to have a little bit of a gay joke there. Because, I don't you know. think that that's a, I don't think that's a gay joke. I think that that's a, I don't think it's gay. I don't think that's a bad joke. Do you? I didn't say it was a bad joke. It says a gay joke. That's a gay you joke. Know, so you're a gay joke. I am. Mm. Here's mm. Anthony. Oh, hey, speaking of gay jokes. <laughs> you took my joke speaking. away from me. Aha, that's what you get. He's like, where y'all doing it? We're shopping. <laughs> and as he walks away, he's like, okay, I won't even ask. But Mary Jo, I just want to tell you that there's an attractive fellow over at the single serve frozen veggies. <laughs> he probably gets the ones with the sauce. Mm. Oh, God, that corn and that butter. I remember that. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> My old roommates used to eat that. I'm like, just 
just get the plain corn and add butter to it. It no. the, the, the the corn and the butter it tastes bad no. to me. Yeah. Oh God. That's not how they do that, honey. You know that. No. 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 My favorite vegetarian meal, though. Well, let me tell you about my favorite vegetarian meal. Oh, and <clears throat> I have I have a recommendation for you and our dear listeners, not sponsored. Oh my gosh. Yes. Beyond, Beyond Meats, uh, bratwurst, are real? fan fucking tastic. That and is this is not coming sponsored. from a German, a German American. So you they, know if a German American says, taste, "Okay, right, pan fry them, pan fry them," they got the taste right. Is it is it one hundred percent a like the mouth feel of a bratwurst? No, but they got the taste right. Well, what they've got, they've got a certain mouth feel. <laughs> No, it's just the mouthfeel of a broad where it just feels like a porn rating to happen. That's all. That's all. Just sorry. Was it Caso? Caso films. Girl, they. <laughs> God, is Caso even still around? I don't know. I just thought to myself, like God, German is porn. Caso. Caso was Czech. Uh, no, Caso Caso was Latino. Caso German. Caso is German. Oh, is it? Yes. Caso's not Czech. Caso's German. I thought it was all Latinos. <laughs> no, Caso is German. I remember because stuff used to come up like online that was like un in German. Like oh the, yeah, it's from Berlin. Titles. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I remember like, because I was at first I thought it was like Nazi stuff. I was like, is this? But it wasn't. It was just German, oh which God. I which I learned later was a different. There's a difference. There is. There is. So now we're at a course. We're at a course. And they, they, they Suzanne's like, what you're going to do is you're going to find us empty spot so that men can surround you can talk to them during, you know, the entire class. And they go into the class as all women. The class is advanced advanced auto mechanics. Oh wow, that's a. The ah. teacher comes in and it's a woman too. Oh, Suzanne just stands up and says, "Excuse me, could we could we get a refund? I'm here with my friend and like we just came here to meet men." The teacher's like, "Yes, I, I, because the rest of everybody's here to learn. We don't want your kind here." And then everybody's like, can we get a refund? Somebody comes <laughs> in and says there's some, like nine hot guys in the Chinese cooking class. And everybody just leaves and rushes out. No, They're I probably felt the like same people that... who had the pasta earlier. Yeah. Well, I felt like in that that moment, I was like, oh, is that is that this show kind of like taking a moment to say, you know what? Men are probably going through the same thing women are going through. Is that, I kind of got no, that little bit of a vibe. No, Do you think so? No, okay. no, I did not. I did not. Because I, I thought that they were all in the Chinese cooking class to find a woman. No, I, I don't. <clears throat> I don't think so. I think that they were gay. Homosexuals. Homosexuals. <laughs> they can't find a man because they're all homosexuals. So now we're in front of a bathroom where the gays go to look for men. <laughs> oh my gosh! There's a theme. <laughs> Dear oh, listeners, crap. if you're ever in a gay club, just don't go to the bathroom. No. Well, yeah, you can if they're sing if they're like locking stalls. Oh, sure. If they have stalls, yeah. If there's a trough, no. Mary Joe's basically like, I, I can't believe that this was I you you're doing this. She's like, this is what Suzanne's like, this was my idea. And Mary Joe's like, we can leave. We can leave. And a man immediately comes out and says, hey, where y'all going? I want to buy you a drink. Ha -ha. Which would never happen. No. Nah. That would never happen. So we're back at Sugar Bakers. And we're exhausted at this point. We are. And Julia is, quote, unquote, razzing them. There's a phrase. I have a co-worker who, who like, you know, because I'm kind of a smart ass. And I, 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 no. I'm, I'm kind of a smart what? ass to her. And she, she's like, I, every once in a while I'll do something wrong or say something silly. And she's like, well, I'm, I'm a, I, 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 there are people around me. She's like, oh, I was just coming over to razz you. I was just coming over to razz you. 
And another coworker, like another one of my reports was right behind her. I was like, I just, if he's like, I just want to see what one of her world famous razzings was like. And I was like, this is her razzing. She just comes over and tells me she's going to razz me. And she walks away. That's it. I don't, mm. I don't, I don't know. Girl. I would say, I'd pull her to the side and say, we need to work on your material. Nah, you're bombing. Nah, she's, she, it's, it's too difficult. It's too difficult. <laughs> Mary Jo's like, I just want a homebody to like sit in front of the fire with an Irish setter. Mm, mm. And Suzanne is like, you could just become a vet because eventually that Irish setter needs to get medicine. And I'm like, that's you true. Know, yes, that's true. Mary Jo has a and break. The, Go ahead. I was going to say, then we have the spinoff episode where Mary Jo becomes a vet. That happens, right? That's that would be much episode. better than the last two seasons of the show. <laughs> so Mary Jo's like, I'm one of the 95%. There are going to be people coming to me, to my house, saying, there's old widow Shively. She she just never found a man. And Julia pulls out a re, retraction from the New York Times that was on page eight. Wow. Page eight. Yes. yes. Not on their front page because no. it's ruined so many women's lives. Yes, yes. hidden away. Mm. Like hidden figures, like hidden figures. Wait. What? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Viola, what are you looking for now? What Viola Davis, because she's she's sad she didn't say yes to that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! I mean, I, you gotta let you gotta have some some you gotta leave room, Viola, for others. You gotta I leave wish, some room, girl. I I want Taraji to get an Oscar so bad. I want her to have an Oscar so bad. She'll get one at some point. I don't think she so. will. She just got she got sidetracked by TV. She'll be back in movies very soon. Okay, okay, I hope so. I mean. Think about it. We have, I mean, we have very limited roles for, for for black women that can act. Though, I mean, right now, Viola, she's kind of aging out of a out of a series of roles. It's true, right? She's moving. She's moving into Angela's territory. Angela's aging into a new territory. <laughs> so really Taraji is Taraji's going to be aging into Viola's territory. Okay, you know, like okay, I said, okay. Hollywood has very limited openings for strong yes. black women. That's true. That's true. That's true. Cicely, That's... Cicely Tyson died. Angela Bassett moves on in, honey. She takes her bags and she comes on in. She's like, all right, I'm the new grandma. And then she... I'm the new grandma. Oscars are like, here you go. Here's your Oscar. Thank you. Finally. Oh, God. Then she gets to give a speech on a porch. Hey, Viola Viola's like, okay, cool. I'm moving on in the, in the auntie. Auntie Angela's roles now, so I'm moving on into the sexy Auntie roles. And HBO's like, great, cool. We're gonna give you a series based on your Suicide Squad character. I'll take it, right? So that's what happens. That's what happens. Oh, God. All right, where are we? Happy at? Black History Month, everybody. Happy Black History Month. <laughs> <laughs> that was your lesson for the for the for the day. So enter in. 80 stud Phil Berenger. Yeah. He, he's got some hair. He's got the, the teacher hair, that uh, that um, Mary Jo's going to work with for the PTA oh, thing. Oh, he's oh. single. Oh. And like he, he, fi he filled out the plan in front of his fireplace, but but he has to apologize because his dog got a hold of it and there's teeth marks. Oh, my God. What kind of dog was it? It, it, it? Well, Suzanne is like, excuse me, is your dog an Irish setter? No, no, it's an English setter. <gasps> he leaves. Close enough, girl. And then, I, then, he, then Suzanne just looks to Mary Jo and says, I guess you're right. You're never going to find somebody that's exactly perfect. Do, 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 do. <laughs> do, 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 do. Do 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 do. Hey, Mame. Yes. Did you find yourself a Miss Georgia World? I really liked um the outfit, the one that Suzanne wore, the black and red. Yes. 
yeah, that's so like the good with the, on her. the ruffles and the little cinch. Like it wasn't too cinch, yeah. just a little cinch. Yeah, that was yeah. so good. So I was like, good. yeah, this is this so is my thing. Good. I like it a lot. Yeah. So um she looked adorable uh-huh. and like I don't know. I, j- I it's so funny now, obviously this was the eighties, so this is a very different time. But it's like, man, I really wish that they had used Suzanne's plus sizeness to actually like showcase that plus size women could continually. Oh, no, girl. No, girl. Oh, I know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Next episode. No, no I know. I'm just saying, like, any thought now in that. hindsight. Yeah. Now in hindsight, it's like, man, this could have really set some, uh, you know, this could have really changed some stuff. We, we, we've, com- we've completely changed what we think about obesity since then. It is very, I mean, some people have not. Like some yeah. doctors have not, but nope. On the whole, eh, people have. <laughs> Thank you, Christian Siriano. <laughs> <laughs> for for remembering that plus size women actually do it's want true. to look pretty. <laughs> it's absolutely true. <laughs> I think it's funny that Christian, obviously, like when he's when he was on Project Runway. That was not his jam, and they actually like picked a girl that that was her jam. But then Christian still like kind of like surpassed that. He's like, "Oh, we can do better than what you're doing." Yeah, for yeah, size yeah. Girls. <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, ma'am, did you enjoy this episode? Um, I thought it was fun. Right, I thought it was fun. I think that. This is one of those episodes is really nice to remind us of, of culturally how far we've come um, and and technically how far we still have to go. <laughs> but yeah. still like, but yeah, I mean, because I mean, nowadays, I mean, we have friends that are that are divorced and, and dating and remarried and things like that in their 30s and 40s. So clearly um, a lot of these stigmas didn't stick. I guess probably because yeah. half the population gets divorced in usually in their thirties. It's so. true. It's true. Except for, so there's the statistics out now finally about gay men. Oh, we don't get divorced. Nothing. We don't, we don't, we do not. We just divorced. die. We, we just we, die. We, we just, yeah, pretty much. We, we, because, because here, here, here's the thing, Mame. We, we'll just, rather than worry about people cheating or something, we'll just open it up like we'll just be like okay you know what you're the fucker i can deal with for us my life like i'm good to have you here if you're gonna cheat just talk to me we'll figure it out that's fine <laughs> is this just about sex okay we're not that's not enough yeah like, not exactly enough like, exactly lesbians like, i'm 52 i'm tired so lesbians, whatever however no. Lesbians, so don't however, bring them back to me we'll be good <laughs> lesbians however tend to get divorced at a slightly higher rate than straight people <laughs> I can't imagine why. <laughs> oh goodness! I can't, can't imagine why that. Hey, babe, be. why don't you tell our dear listeners where they can find you? Oh, sure. Hello, dear listeners. It's I, Auntie Mame, your favorite relation. Um, you can find me on social media at Auntie Mames with an S. Uh, you can find me in real life performing with the Villain Theater Improv and Stand Up Comedy Theater in Miami. More about them at villaintheater.com. You can find me hosting every Thursday night Amazing Colossal Karaoke, which is like a cabaret show uh, in South Beach. Uh, you can find out more about them at Killy Riddle. On um, then. Hmm, I'm not really doing a lot of stand-up right now, so that's not a thing. But you can find me every other week hosting the It's Happening Out uh, talk show at itshappeningout.com. It's a little queer-focused talk show where I and a bunch of other panelists talk about the week's events in queer life. So how about you, Mims? Hey, y'all. I'm the Divine Miss Mims. You can find me online at Divine Miss Mims. I am going to start streaming soon. Probably in two to three weeks because you know, Ooh, yeah, stuff, stuff, stuff's come up. I was sick and then I was Ooh, tired and then I'm up. sick and yeah. tired. And now I'm tired going, I'm sick. going down to Florida. So you gonna die? <laughs> we the, gonna burn you alive, girl? I hope not. Anyway, <laughs> oh girl. Oh Lord, what was I going with this? Anyway, hey man, you can find you can find me on Twitch at Divine and Swims. Hey man, yes. Did you know we have a Patreon? Shut your front door. If you go to Patreon.com, maybe you can throw some money. I say, man, yes. Did you know? Do we have another podcast? 
Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, I did. It's called of... You Slay Me. It's a merch for podcast. Hey, man. Ooh, yeah. Did you know that we have merchandise? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, uh, you should tell some of our friends about it. I won't. But, dear listeners, you can go find it at mimsababe.com. Hey, Mame. Yes? Do you know what I like? <laughs> oh, um. Oh, God. God, this bit every oh. time. I saw reviews. Yes, yes, babe. Finally, I had to pry it out of you using the jaws of fucking life. Dear listeners, I love five star reviews. They mean a lot you to me. You should talk about yourself like that. Oh, oh, I am a five star review. What? <laughs> I've only ever gotten less than five stars once, and he knows what he did. Anyway. Wow. Sorry, poopery. <laughs> babe, you bitch. Just say good night, babe. Good night, babe. <laughs> <laughs>